This is the very powerful Stephanie Blaine. I am so blessed to have her in studio today. She is gonna be posing right now at the 20 minute mark and also the 40 minute mark. Enjoy. So many bodybuilding questions to ask you, but you were saying you were having dinner with Molly and Matt yesterday? Yeah, those are um, some of my probably, I would say they're my best friends. Um, we, Molly, um, she's been a role model for me probably since day one. Um, and it's just been like the relationship from there has just been building, um, getting stronger. Um, she also competes in bodybuilding. She does women's physique. Um, so, like I said, she's a huge role model from role model for me, but she um, she's also my best friend. So we go and get cheat meals together, and um, she's like become the person that I can go to to talk about the difficulties of prep and and to have someone to confide in and and relate to in that way because it's really hard when everybody around you isn't a bodybuilder, hmm. um, and, it, and it's especially like to that degree, like it, it's it's difficult to to have someone to relate to. Every now and then we meet competitors and they don't have any support team. How do you think they do it? I have no idea. I really don't. It's a very lonely sport if you do it alone. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't imagine doing it without some of the people who I have. And it does, it does take a while to like build that support and like really build it strongly. But once you have it, like I can't imagine doing preps without it. I really can't. It's crazy. Sure. We have some video of you at the Johnny O. Jackson Classic. Um, let's take a look at that right now. Uh, what do you remember from this show? Oh. Uh, so that was my second show. Um, I remember that show going very smoothly, actually. To be honest, that I, I have no um, like feelings of things that I would change about it. Um, that show, I was able to stay home the night before, so I didn't have to stay in a hotel. Um, it was in Fort Worth, so it was about 20 minutes to drive there. It was like super easy. Um, my coach actually set up the tanning, the hair and makeup for me. Um, he, he gave me my appointments. I paid him the day before. Um, I mean, it was like so smoothly. I went to bed that night, slept great, woke up in the morning. Um, I was kind of used to getting up in like the morning anyway, so like it was no problem. Drove there. Um, and then I just like, from there, it was just tanning hair, um, just getting ready. And then I just kind of sat backstage and waited for my coach to come get me. It was like so so smooth so i mean and then you know the only thing i i do wish was that um because i had already done a previous show and i had won that show um i couldn't do like a true novice or novice or anything and everybody in front of me um at the, the at the johnny o. jackson had actually they were in a true novice or novice situation so i'm just like sitting around waiting backstage because i was the last to pose and i was like oh my gosh when is it my time like are they gonna forget me you know and they actually almost did i was backstage and um, yeah, I was backstage and they had already called wellness and the person backstage that was running it, I was like, they haven't called my number yet to line up because they were going through true novice and novice. So that everybody was already up there. And I was like walking around, just posing with my coach and he had already been up there because I had some, um, he was uh, coaching some of the other girls up there. So he wasn't with me back there at that time. And I was like looking around, I was like, I'm the only wellness girl back here. I mean, I know that I'm class D or C or whatever, like I'm gonna go last, but I was like, I'm the only one back here. So I kept asking the person running, I was like, did y'all forget me? Like, am I supposed to go up there? And she's like, no, just wait. And I was like, okay. And then sooner or later, my coach Jay, he finally came back and I'm like, Jay, am I supposed to be up there? Cause like, I don't want to barge in, but like, yeah, I was supposed to. So he had to go up there and like, kind of talk to them and be like, hey, she's supposed to be up here. But like, I mean, I could have missed it. So I'm like, that's terrifying to me. But I was like, everybody, so I was just waiting. Cause I'm like, oh, well, I'm kind of the loner here in terms of like not doing a true novice or novice. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrifying to, to miss that, um, to miss my, my time on stage. Mm -hmm. 
but you still won the overall. I did, yeah. <laughs> I did. So every that's what I'm saying. It it at the end of the day, it all went so smoothly. Um, besides just that, and you know, it ended so early too. So I was like, the last, the heart of Texas. It, it's a bigger show, so I think we ended at like 10 p.m. Hmm. And and the Johnny O. Jackson was so small, I think we ended at like six. So I had like a whole night to like enjoy. But I think your next show is going to be nationals. Um, we're talking about these two shows that are in the Metroplex here in Dallas. Uh, what do you think it's going to be like to do a show outside of you know the city? That's definitely something that... Have to stay at a hotel. And, yeah. And the first time yeah. um, I did a show in the heart of Texas, I did stay at a hotel because it was in Irving. So it was a little bit of a mm. far drive for me that I was like, you know, I'm just going to stay there. Um, it would just be easier if I just stayed there overnight and whatnot. Sure. Um, so I'm a little bit um, aware of the challenges of traveling on prep and, and what all goes into preparing for the show in a different, you know, environment than what I'm used to. But it's going to be a little bit more difficult or different if it's in a different state, um, because I don't know how my body's going to respond um, traveling and, and... Um, Doesn't the body do weird stuff in a plane or something? Or? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm a little bit worried about. Um, you know, they say that sometimes you, you tend to hold on to water mm -hmm. or... Um, you know, maybe just everybody's so different. I think the typical complaint is that you end up holding water and you get a little bit bloated. So um, the plan is to leave a couple days before. Um, one, because you want to get there early and settle and make sure that your body's responding correctly. But but also because, you know, it's the check-in is going to be a day before. It's just easier. But so the plan is that for sure. And I think it's going to be okay. Like, I'm not stressing too much about it because I have done a prep in a hotel before. But there are considerations you have to take into, you know, your food. Um, once you get there, you have to go to the store and make sure that you have your foods. And, the hotel room has to have a refrigerator, maybe? Yeah, I'm thinking about doing, like, an Airbnb because mm. we can cook our own food. Gotcha. Um, and uh, so that's probably kind of important to me to probably get an Airbnb close to it rather than a hotel because, like you said... The refrigerator and um, the uh, the stovetop, things like that. You need I I need to cook food. You know I can't bring food. I can't bring ten meals on the plane with me. So, um, and even little things like uh, you know the sheets. You have to make sure you bring your own sheets because if you stain the sheets, you have to pay for them. You have to pay for them. Gotcha. So <laughs> when you get your tan done. You have to make sure. I've never heard that you before. Have to, yeah, it's, yeah, it's never, I, I've never. It's um, a little detail. I've just never comprehended that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they do charge you. That's mm. you know, that's something that some of my coaches, that's people I've worked with before, are like make sure you bring your own sheets because if you bring something and you ruin them, they charge you. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, who, who have you gotten your tan done with before? Is it Pro Tan or? I don't think so. The mm. first time. I can't even remember who did the first time. Um, honestly, the first time I didn't really, I didn't really like the tan on me. Um, just you know, different tans are going to respond differently to people, and they mm -hmm. have their own formulas and stuff. But I can't even remember. It was a it was a Jan Tana product, but I can't remember like who did the tanning. It wasn't Pro Tan. Mm. So I don't know. Hopefully, the last tan was um, by uh, World Tanning hair and makeup or something like that okay they were pretty good cool yeah. last two shows you've uh, worn a green suit uh thinking about changing it up i don't think so um I say a lot of coaches and people say the, uh, the color of the suit we change it in accordance with the color of the competitor's skin or have you heard stuff like that i have yeah um and my suit designer i kind of let her um, advise me on what I should be doing because when I first picked the suit, I was like, should I go? I think the three I was considering is probably like, like a blue, a green, and a red. Mm. Um, and she was like, well, I think you look best in green because you kind of have reddish undertones. So you kind of want to defer to your suit designer if if that's an option. I think because they know best. I mean, they do it all the time. So she just kind of like helped me pick the color, but. So far, all the critiques that I've gotten on it have been like really positive. Everybody's, all the judges have liked me in it. I love the color. I think it's different. Even if it is a green and people show up with a green, I think it's a different green. So I just want to stay with that because I think that it complements my skin and helps me stand out the best that I can. That's cool. Well, um, and when are you doing nationals next? We talked about it a little bit off camera, but have y'all decided yet? Uh, no, we haven't really decided yet, but mm. that's the plan this year. 
um, to do to do a national show. Cool. Is Brian going? He's standing off, sitting off camera here. He is going. Of course, he's going. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So he's 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 going to be going for sure. Um, in the last uh, episode, in episode one, um, we had Bentley Stevenson and her her uh, fiance uh, hopped on camera. That was at the end of the show. Why don't we just do it now, Brian? You want to hop on camera real quick? <laughs> Like, um, and these, these mics are real sensitive, so you can get as close to it as possible. Um, like, um, anxiety, nerves, or when you see, uh, Stephanie on stage or what goes oh, through your mind? She's on stage. It's like, usually I'm the one, cause when I met her, she didn't do bodybuilding or anything. And I was never used to. And see, see if you can get a little bit yeah, closer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I was never used yeah. to being the one watching someone compete i was always the one competing because i compete in powerlifting so watching her i was i felt more nervous than when i compete myself i mean i was pacing around that's <laughs> i don't sit down i don't sit down when she competes uh it's just it's very very nerve-wracking just because i know how much she pours into it she's the most dedicated person i've ever had in my life so if it were to not go right, it I knew it just, you know, it would, it would suck. So I'm just like, please go right. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier we were checking the audio and the cameras and you were reading my notes and I wrote down, um, her, her delts seem to be getting bigger. <laughs> Is that, do you agree with this? <laughs> yeah. She has quickly grown. I think in wellness, um, we think a lot about, uh, the lower half of the body, but, um, delts are important in wellness, right? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think that um, when I talked to my coach coming off of the last show, he said my one, my biggest critique from the judges there was to get bigger overall, to look better and, and bigger and more mature, um, which is my same critique the first year. But I think I definitely improved from the first to second. But when I talked to him after that second show, he said, we want to grow everywhere and, and maintain balance. So that was like our main focus this off season. Um, when you look at the top competitors in wellness, they don't. maintain balance is like symmetry. Yeah, or, a little or, bit. Even though wellness hmm. itself is a category that you want to be asymmetrical in terms of a bigger, lower body dominant, you know, division, there is still an element of balance, and you want to make sure that your proportions are correct. And so, when you look at the top competitors, um, the ones that go to the Olympia, they have a you know a balance maybe they're not symmetrical up and down but they they have a flow to their physique and so that was really important to us this off season was to maintain that that flow and that, those proportions and, and to just grow everywhere mm -hmm. when you have thought of uh the olympia I'm, you've had to a few times think about it. i wonder if i could be on that stage someday what is it like thinking about that sure i mean i definitely it it would be great it's like it's a dream of mine um but and to think that I would be standing amongst the best of the best in the world is is beyond my wildest dreams. So sure, it's it's definitely like crossed my mind. Um, but I think for me, it's not something that I'm like, oh, this is the main goal because I'm taking it step by step. I mean, mm -hmm. there's definitely steps to things. You know, the first the first step is just to go pro, and then at that point, once you go pro, it's like, how am I going to stand up against the pros? I mean, like there's a there's an element of like realism and it's like, how am I going to stand up? And you have to be honest with yourself before you can like really think about taking serious steps towards like the Olympia, for example. You, you get to the Olympia, Brian's going to freak out in the crowd. You're going to be way nervous. <laughs> if he doesn't have a heart attack before then. Yeah. Because you this, know, show, this show might, it might do it. give me the heart attack. It might do it. Yeah. Yeah. People in Nationals don't don't come to play. They come to compete. No. And that itself is like, you know, there's such, there's so much respect I have for all competitors, um, but really for the ones that are best at their craft, whether that be at nationals or, or the Olympia, I think that if you're a pro, I mean, you're the best at your craft. Mm -hmm. so, and then there's the best of the best of the best. So, Have you ever seen Brian compete in a powerlifting? I have, yeah. I've seen him, I think, probably three or three or four meets now. I've seen him. Are you calmer? Are you, you got the anxiety too? I do have anxiety, but like, I think his is worse. He's just, he's very emotional. He's really? Like, I think yeah. so, yeah. And that's a good thing. When it comes to her, yeah. He's very emotional. Um, hmm. So I think that he probably gets more nervous than I do, but I do get nervous because I know, again, how hard he works. And and for me, it's like when he's lifting, I'm, I'm not sure if you've ever seen like a powerlifting meet or anything, but like, 
for him. They're usually in some of the NPC shows, True. so we yeah, can walk come around like conventions yeah. sometimes or like mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but it's it is scary because it's like you know, for example, like if he's in the hole of a squat, it's like is he gonna get up? Like or you know if he's doing a deadlift, like is he gonna hold onto the bar? And it's scary because like I know. That's a lot of weight that That's he's holding. That's a lot of weight. And I'm <laughs> yeah, like, oh my gosh. I think the anxiety is a little bit different for her. It's probably like, is he going to tear his groin? Versus for me, it's like, <laughs> am I going to stumble? Is she going to stumble? Gonna, yeah. Or mm. is she going to, you know, is she going to just win? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's but, just different. I mean, for Brian, he talks a lot about like when he's on. When he's in a meet, um, it's very technical. So your lifts are very technical. So it's easy to mess things up. And if like one things go one thing goes wrong, your lift can not be as good as you want, or maybe it doesn't meet the requirements to 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 be counted as a good lift. Mm. So like that, those do come into play as well. It's like, is he going to make sure that he has those intricacies in, in place and, and get a good lift and get the you know green light and have it count or. Or if he does miss a lift, it's scary because it's just like from then on, it's like, oh, oh I hope he gets the next one because it does affect his overall and, and decision making in terms of his attempts. So it's just have you have you done one recently? Uh, it's been almost about a year. Okay. We were in Vegas um, and that gave her because she actually started prep. Oh, we yeah. Went, so we did have a little bit of the experience of getting on the plane. She brought food. We had to stop by a target on the way there and we got an airbnb to cook food for her and stuff mm -hmm. so she's got some experience with with traveling so i don't think it'll be completely new too too new and too big of a deal i think she'll do very well um at this next show with that that's great the um we're talking a little bit about posing already um are you working with a posing coach right now i'm not at the moment okay. um the last year the last um, show that I did, I really just had my coach. Um, he kind of just amazing how, how uh, you um, the posing looks easy, but it isn't. Like we we you you posed once already uh, in this show, and you looked a little bit out of breath. I mean, just a little bit, you know. It, yeah, you know? no, I mean, it's it's, it's it's okay. It's it's a good it's a it's a fair assumption because posing does get a little bit out of breath sometimes, you know, but. Um, because there are specific things you have to do with your body to make sure that you're getting the angles that you want. Yep. And those aren't always comfortable for sure. So it's it, you can get out of breath. Um, but I did. I worked with Jay. He's my coach who does you know my preps and, and my off seasons. He did a little bit of my posing um, last year, and it's not like he posed, you know. But he would look and see, okay, like let's fix this, let's tweak this. And I did so much posing with Brittany Bull my first year. And she was so love her. She's amazing. She really is. She helped me so much. And so I felt very comfortable going into my second year that I was like, okay, I just need to tweak some stuff. It's not like you need to completely teach me all posing, but man, I'm, I give her credit. Cause at first, I mean, she was the one who saw me from the very beginning and that posing was not great. <laughs> so I've come a long way. And uh, just for, it. just for fun, we have video of Brittany Bull on stage. Let's roll that right now as she's, she's in women's physique. She it's is. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, she's, and she's, she knows so much about posing and everything. I mean, I, from what I understood, I think she started a figure. Um, if I'm not wrong, I could be wrong. But I think she started a figure, so she at least knows, like, she doesn't know wellness wellness specifically, but she's, she knows how to pose for wellness. She doesn't know wellness, but she knows how to pose for it. Um, so, like, you know, I work with her in groups. I work with her um, individually, and so it's, she, I mean, I would say 80% of my posing is probably thanks to her. I mean, she gave me that huge foundation, so I felt comfortable the next year, um, and even this year, just kind of tweaking it a little bit, like, oh, well, like, I, what do I think looks best now that I've developed this or that, or um, maybe I can just add more flow or something, but in general, she's been so instrumental in posing. This is a question I've never asked before. Um, it just randomly popped into my brain. Um, as a competitor gets more dense and mature, I mean, does the po does the posing change? I think it does. Um, I mean, my posing has changed a lot for sure, but maybe that's not just because um, of my physique as it is today. But if you think about your angles and what looks best, and maybe as you develop more of a quad sweep, maybe you turn your leg out a little bit more. There's definitely little details that go into play mm -hmm. that makes your um, physique look better on the stage. So I think that there is, you know, like for example, you wouldn't want 
to maybe pose the same in your off season as you do in your, I mean, like you would want to, you want to keep it consistent, but maybe as you're leaning out, you see different ways it look better and you can fix your posing based on that. So like when I think about working with someone this year, um, as I go into prep, I want to just wait until I get a little bit leaner so I can for sure say, this is what I'm going to look like more so on stage and they can help me like fix and critique and fine tune it based on that. That's perfect. Let's continue this conversation. We're coming up on the 20 minute mark. This is Stephanie posing for the second time in this show. Let's go to that. Stephanie, thank you so much for doing that. Um, I'm looking at my notes, it says sword. Do you still have your sword from uh, the first show? I do, I do still have that sword. Um, it was so crazy, like when I first got it too, because I, like I said, that was my first show and I was like, what do I do with this? Like, you know, like when I won it and they handed it to me, they wanted me to do a pose. And I remember thinking, what pose do you want me to do with this? You know? I remember that. You just, you like, just held I it up. What do I do? Yeah. Oh. And I, looking back, I wish I'm like, oh man, it would have been a better picture if I knew what to do with it, but I didn't. So, you know, at that point you can't change it, but I do still have it. Um, and I, and funny enough at the time I was like, man, I wish this was a, was a trophy. I wanted a trophy for some reason. Mm -hmm. And the second now, show was a trophy. The second show was a trophy. But mm -hmm. now looking back, it's like, you know, it is kind of cool to have a sword. So I was like, it's. It was cool and I, I wouldn't change it. But at the time I was like, what do I do with this? Like people aren't going to know what this is. Like if I tell them, oh, I got this sword for winning a show. It's like you usually think of like a trophy. Mm -hmm. So I wanted a trophy because I was like, oh, people will know. So but anytime I tell people, you know, or if anyone sees the sword, they think it's cool. So it's, I wouldn't change it. Cool. You're on prep right now. What's the, um, you know, the meals look like lately? So I've actually been getting a decent amount of food. So like, even though I'm on prep, like it doesn't really feel too, um, you know, horrible yet. Um, I get, I kept the food relatively the same as my, my off season, just in different quantities. Um, so I do a lot of chicken. I do a lot of egg whites. Um, mm -hmm. I actually do a lot of cream of rice. I don't know if you've ever heard of cream of rice. It's like in a box in the middle of the grocery store. Yeah, it's like on the cereal aisle. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> it's on the cereal aisle um, and it comes in like an orange box. So they do cream of wheat and they do cream of rice. Yep. And the one that I do is a cream of rice. So mm -hmm. I think um, I just, again, kind of defer to my coach on what he gives me and he recommended the cream of rice. And it's kind of been a staple mm -hmm. for my pre-workouts, for my post-workouts. How's it different than like jasmine rice? Um, it's... It's not necessarily totally different because it's still a rice based. So like for me, when I do a pre or post workout, I do a rice based because it's just faster digesting. So you get that, um, you know, the, the restore of your glycogen, things like that for your next workout next time. So it helps you recover in that respect to, to kind of. Um, do you feel the rice working when you're lifting? Like it's a good energy it's source? Good. And it's like, for me, I, I like it because it's light and it doesn't like feel like it's weighing me down. It doesn't take too long to digest. It's not complex. It's very simple starch. So like it, um, it digests quickly and it, 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 you know, my stomach is fine with it. So mm -hmm. that's the main reason why I stick with it. But, um, so I do a lot of that. And then, I mean, I do a lot of, um, do some Dave's killer bread. Have you ever heard that? I think I have, and I'm not. And I'm not just saying that. I, I, it's. I mean, it's in Whole Foods and yeah. And uh, I think I've seen it at Top Thumb. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. But it's. I like it because. Does it have a lot of protein in it? No, it actually just has. It's more of like oh, a. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. It has more of like a fiber. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more like whole wheats and whole grains, and 
Um, so on the opposite side of the cream of rice, you know, there's a, a, a side of like, you want to make sure you're getting your fiber mm. because when you are in a prep situation, um, making sure that you're getting fiber, it's going to stay with you longer. So um, you're not going to want to pick simple carbs all day because your body's just going to run through it. And you're just going to be hungry. Okay. So I, I do like the bread for that. Um, I do some peanut butter for my fats, avocado. That's really the main thing that I be, that I kind of stick with for that. Um, lots of chicken, turkey, and um, and then I get a cheat meal once a week so far. So mm -hmm. I was talking with a mentor of mine, Greg McCoy, uh, owner of Hidden Gym, and he was saying uh, the number one thing that Americans probably should be doing, probably all around the world too, not just the U.S., as far as um, uh, fitness, nutrition, stuff like that, is preparing your meals in advance. That yes. would be his number one thing. Why yes. do people have so much trouble doing this? Probably uh, time constraints. Yeah. I mean, I know as much as anybody else, like how hard it is to do, to, to stay on top of it when you're busy. Um, I myself consider myself to be busy. Um, and so you just have to make sure that, you know, that you do stay on top of your meals. The one thing that I do say that has helped me is just to keep it very consistent. Like I don't really change it up. So it's not a question of like, what am I going to have for dinner? It's like, let me pick one of the three choices that I eat because it's just so easy to like, that fits my calories. I know it's going to fit. So I'm just going to put in my fitness pal, call it a day. Mm -hmm. So I keep kind of like my breakfast and lunch and pre post workouts, that kind of thing, the same. And the only thing that I really change up is my dinner. And it's like, which three options do I want? But it works. And so like when you're in prep or if you're on your off season, you have more like um, calories and room for error and just things to change it up. But when you're in prep, I don't, I don't like to change it up. I just like to say, you know, my body knows what it's doing with this. I'm going to stick with this, pick it, put it in my fitness pal. And it's easy to copy and paste too. So it's just from a time constraint perspective, that helps with that. Do you do your own cooking or someone else do it? Um, me and Brian do it. So Brian cooks a lot of my meals. I mean, he does so much. That's not true. He doesn't do all of it. He does so much of it. I will say he does probably like 80% of it, um, which has helped so much. So like, you know, I, I told you before this, um, I go to school and I work. So um, on a day, like for example, that I have class on like for a Tuesday um, in my prep. Now I usually have two meals before that. So he, he helps me cook my breakfast. And then I bring my pre-workout with me and I eat it between my classes, get off from, uh, from class, and then I'll eat my post-workout. And then if I have something, for example, like a physical therapy appointment or something, I'll um, bring that with me. So I'm always bringing my food with me, but he, he helps me cook a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, it's a big deal. To, I see this all the time. The partner is the boyfriend, the girlfriend, and they, they, they know how to cook. You know, they, It's not just lifting together, it's cooking together. It's true, and, and I'll tell you for sure, like when you're on prep, at least from my, um, in my opinion, I get very frustrated sometimes easily, like when I'm cooking, so if it doesn't go right, it's just like, it's irritating, it's frustrating. When you're on prep, it's like, things are just amplified. Mm. So if he can cook for me, it just takes so much stress off of me. So it's just like, if something goes wrong, he's like, you know, like, so I work, and then when I get off work, he's already made like the, the meat for dinner, so I just have to put it together. Mm -hmm. So it's major, very um, helpful. Brian is still here off camera. We s well done. <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of remind me a little bit of Aaron Stern. Do you know who that is? No, I don't. So Aaron Stern is uh, Miss Figure Olympia, not current, but but from a, a while ago. Um, uh, she ran track. Oh, really? Um, you kind of look like her a little bit, oh. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I was, I was watching a, a few videos or like, uh, can you do high jumps? High you... jumps. No, you know what? When I was actually doing track and cross country, w when I look back at my time, I was like, man, the one thing that I wish that I, I could have done was like pole vault. Mm -hmm. So like, I wish that I could have done like a track, like a track and field event, not just like a running event, but you know, my body just wasn't made for it, I guess. But I, I do think that that would have been cool to do a track or field event, like a, like a high jump or a long jump or triple jump or something, you know? How do you think the uh, track stuff helps you with bodybuilding? Like, is, um, I don't know do, <laughs> where I was quite going with that. Do you know where I was going with that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can speak to like um, how my experience that can contribute to bodybuilding. Um, gotcha. There is some, I will say, um, I did long distance. So there's not a whole lot of, I think, 
development that I got from track necessarily. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not, I can't speak to that for sure because I don't, I don't really know. Um, I played soccer prior to that. So maybe some of that development in terms of the lower body came from that. Uh, I'm not sure because I don't really, from my understanding, long distance doesn't really do a lot for you in terms of your leg development. It's mostly like your sprints or mid distance situation, which when I think back about my time, I actually think that I would have been very good at mid distance. Um, because I, I think I have the strength and the endurance is something that I worked on clearly because I ran long distance. So I think that I actually think I would have been meant for like an 800 meter distance. And I, I was actually very good at the 1500, which in my mind to a lot of people may seem like a long, you know, it's close to a mile, but to me, that's a mid distance, um, which is crazy. I know. But to me, when I think about a long distance, I'm thinking a 5k, a 10k, a 3k. Um, and then a mid distance, 1500 is like real close to that mid distance. So like maybe like an 800 meter or 15 is probably what I was meant for mm. because I have that strength. Um, but I still think that I did get some kind of contribution to, to my training from my long distance track days. Um, I think that, um, I still have those, you know, slow twitch fibers in terms of endurance. I think that when I do like a, a set of 20, for example, on like, I don't know, a leg press or or any kind of exercise, I do have that endurance built up and I think it comes back very quickly when I decide like, okay, it's time for prep. I need to start doing my cardio or my steps. Like my endurance comes back very quickly. So, um, and also from a mental standpoint, running is very difficult. So when I think about my, you know, miles and miles I used to run, and I mean like, you know, especially long distance, like 10 mile runs, I'm like, that's a very mental thing. So um, bodybuilding is also very mental. Mm. And I think that, that's helped me so much with it. The, as a wellness competitor, do you guys do a lot of, I mean, it's different for everyone, but um, cardio and stuff like that? I think that it's, I mean, it's different for everyone, like you said. So, mm. um, but it, it would be, you know, we do cardio just like everybody else. I mean, whatever that may look like to you, whether that be steps or actual cardio, like an elliptical or stand master or something. There is, I feel like not a whole lot of getting around doing cardio in your prep because you still have to, you know, take away those calories somehow. So you, you still are going to have to um, decrease your calories and do some kind of prep okay. uh, cardio, whether that be early or later. I, I, I would be very shocked to see if anybody could get by their whole prep without doing some sort of cardio, because there is, you know, you have to make sure that you're getting your activity up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the conditioning for nationals? Does it need to change? I think so. Um, based on my last critiques in my show at the Johnny O. Jackson, they said that my conditioning was good and that there wasn't anything that they like necessarily needed to change. But when I look back, I would have liked to come in just a little bit tighter, just a little bit leaner. Um, so hopefully, you know, going into this show, that's, you know, what, not too lean though, because, you know, for sure, I don't want to push it too much because there is an element of you want some kind of softness to a wellness look without being too soft. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you don't want any striations. You don't want, like, especially in your glutes, you know, you can actually get knocked down for that because you're too conditioned. You know, there's a there's a look that they want. They want mm -hmm. a hard, defined, separated muscle type look, but it's still a softness. From my understanding, they don't want any striations or anything. That's super smart. Um, man, on your Instagram, the stuff you have pinned at the top i mean the last show the pictures are just done so well they are yeah yeah it's really cool um and some of those were from uh james james allen uh -huh. media so uh -huh. some of those were his and then i actually had um one of my friends and brian friend yeah Brian's there were some from the crowd there were some pictures taken from the crowd that must have been yeah you were talking yeah about. so like as you can see there's some that that were from james allen's um mm -hmm. his type of pictures but i have a friend who also he does photography um his name's josh miller um, Miller. Yeah. And he's a friend of Brian's and, and he actually goes, he used to work with Molly and Matt in his, in their gym. And now he actually gets coached by Brian. So he does powerlifting, but he does, um, photography and, and he was, um, he's he was very there. good. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. Very good. And he took some good pictures and it was like, it was nice because it was, it was a different, um, it was just a different look. So it was very, it was very unedited, natural type look, the pictures that he sent me. So I yes. was able to, um, kind of pick and choose which ones I wanted to upload mm -hmm. and show. But these um um 
Give, give me a, 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 I'm going to ask you an amateur question. <laughs> I'm amateur. Uh, I'm watching on your Instagram and you're putting on these black gloves. It was during the, the brick wall media video, which by the way, are also good reels. He does really very cool. good videos. Yeah. Uh, so when you're wrapping those black things around your hands, my amateur question, what do those do? Oh, they, um, I think. Just help okay. with pulling or. Yes. Yeah, so I was doing back day, probably in the video you're referring to. It's kind of a selfish question because I'm wondering if I need that. <laughs> I think, okay, so I'll explain a little bit. Um, so that video, I think, was during one of my back days. And um, there's different things that you can wrap around your wrists. Um, for example, like if you're doing a squat, um, when I do my squats and I'm doing a heavy squat and I'm doing a set of them, I do wrist wraps. Because when you're doing a low bar squat, it can kind of put pressure on your wrists. I get that all the time. Me. So those hey, are wrist look. wraps. But in the video, those were actually um, like, um, those were like grips. So like it comes like it's like a foam thing that goes around your um, wrist and there's different types too. But then there's like a piece of fabric that kind of runs through the, the, the section of your hand okay. and you can wrap it around like a bar or a handle of like a machine and it helps you with your grip. I think in, in the way that I use it, it helps to make sure that you're not gripping too much with your wrist and using your bicep to do a pull movement. So like when I'm doing a like a back movement, I want to make sure it's all coming from my back. So I wrap it around the handle and just kind of do a loose grip with my hand and it helps the handle stay on there while I can make sure that I'm really activating the back muscle that I want. Maybe I'm going to go off on a tangent here. Like uh, when I'm doing chest press, my wrists are always bending. That's another thing. So you okay. can, um, if you're doing like a chest press, you can do a wrist wrap. So okay. instead of having the straps or on there, because the things I was using the back video is a strap, mm. um, but you can actually purchase the wraps and it kind of helps stabilize your wrists and take some pressure off of there and helps you with your pain and, and while you're doing a set and mm -hmm. kind of helps you, you know, get some stability and strength in your wrist mm -hmm. while you're doing this. So maybe look into that, but you can get them off Amazon and um, there's different lengths too. So if you go to buy one, there's really long ones, um, there's shorter ones. I think like they actually handed some out in like the gift bags for the, the Tony o. Jackson. So like you can mm. buy them a lot of different places. Yeah, you and Brian just are so awesome fit people oh, um thank you. do you do you ever have any uh challenges as far as aches and pains go during prep i do um yeah you see um, a, see a chiropractor and not a chiropractor i go see a, a physical or therapist actually take anything for inflammation you see where i'm going with this yes yeah um in terms <laughs> of the recovery so this is the first year that i actually started working with my physical therapist um and he's been so great um he um was referred to me by my coach jay um, and his name is Julian. Uh, he runs uh, a physical therapy um, business called uh, Peak Performance. Um, so I, I probably have maybe a couple things on my Instagram about him, but he's he's really good. And so like I go see him twice a week or every two weeks, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, and I have been doing that since um, my off season. So through off season and prep, um, I've been seeing him and he's been really helpful both in the recovery standpoint and um, um, he can do different things in terms of if you have an ache or pain. Um, so like something that I've been kind of dealing with this season um, is a little bit of patellar tendonitis. Um, yeah, so it's um, it's inflammation of your patella mm. and it's my right leg. So it, it, cause, it causes some kind of aching pain in the front of your um, leg, mm. right at your patella where the tendon attaches. Um, so he can do different, you know, um, kind of some different modalities, um, ultrasound, uh, things like that, that can help me with that. And it's been helping. It's not going to completely knock it out. I think, I honestly think probably to knock it out, I need some rest, but I can't give it that right now, um, which is okay. You know, I'll work through it, but um, he does so much for me. So Julian's great. Yeah. You seem very in tuned in this topic. Are, is, are you doing some medical in school right now? You're in school right now? Yeah. Um, so I... I'm hoping to apply to a physician assistant school. Um, I have like one more class left um, in terms of prerequisites because I already have my bachelor's degree, um, but I didn't, there's a couple prerequisites that I didn't get while I was getting that bachelor's degree. So a couple classes left to take. Um, and then right now I'm working as a medical scribe for orthopedics. So it's an outpatient orthopedic um, center that I work for and I do medical scribing and that kind of thing to get some hours for the application. That's really cool. Like school, everything, it's all tied in. Yeah. It's cool.
while we're two minutes away from you posing again, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Where should we jump to? Um, what else is on your mind? Like um, when you think about like all the hard work that has gone into these shows and I don't know, even school, I mean, you know, do you ever reminisce a lot and think about it? I do when I have some time. Mm -hmm. Like it's very easy to get kind of caught up with everything that I have to do. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, I'm like the most busy person. Obviously there's people who, who are, I'm sure busier than I am, but I do consider myself a busy person. Um, I, I try to be the best that I can in, in all aspects of my life, whether that be school or, or work or bodybuilding. And, and it's easy to kind of get caught up with like, um, you know, your day-to-day -day things, but, and, and to be like, oh, I wish I, I was further along or, or this or that. But when you do reminisce, it's like you, you kind of see like, I really have come a long way. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of that for sure. There's still room to grow and I'm definitely not satisfied, but you know, there's, there's, I've come a long way and I'm proud of that. We're at the 40 minute mark. Uh, Stephanie posing again, we actually pre-recorded this. Let's go to that right now. Stephanie, we're back. Thank you so much. Uh, third and final time posing. Uh, I took a quote from your Instagram. Oh, no. <laughs> so the quote. Post. Um, it's from Sophia Bush. Yeah. Uh, you are allowed to be a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneous, simultaneously. Yeah. So what, what does this quote mean to you? I think that kind of going back to what I just said, it's, it's like it's important to know and be very happy and proud of how far you've come and be that masterpiece and, and be, you know, very, you know, um, like I said, proud of, of where you are today. And so like that day that I posted it, it's probably one of the, the pictures that I posted of a show. Um, your masterpiece, you know, is is how far you've come that day. And, and for me that day, it was like my physique was that masterpiece. Um, and, and it was a masterpiece in that, you know, I, I I did very well. Like I should be proud of my effort. I won. And not only that, but even if I didn't win, I think that I brought a good package and my physique was good. And um, so I should be proud of that. But at the same time, like I said, it's not, it's not finished. It's so there's a work in progress still there. And I think that it's important that you continually work on it because I mean, bodybuilding, a lot of people say you're never going to be satisfied with your physique. And I completely agree with that. Um, there's never going to be a satisfactory time, or at least it shouldn't be, because yeah, there's I think always it, work to be done. Somewhere. I think I've heard someone describe it once, like you're chasing perfection, but perfection doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah. So, you know, there's always going to be like, you're going to step on stage and you're like, dang, I wish that I would have, you know, worked on my, you know, glutes more, or maybe like, I don't like the balance between my hamstrings and this, or, you know, or like wow, I wish I would have come in more conditioned or there's always something that you wish that you could have done. Or even if it's like as simple as like, or not simple, more complex. And it's like, you know, I wish I would have brought more maturity and that's going to take so long. But sometimes that's the case, you know, it's like be good and be happy about what you brought that day and be like, you know, consider that your best effort. Hopefully it is. Um, and make sure that, you know, that's that masterpiece that you bring, but but be you know sure to, to always continually work on it because it shouldn't be complete. There's always something to do. I mean, yeah, I, I I think you're gonna turn pro this year. I think it's coming. Does your coach does you. your coach say the same thing? He's he's very hopeful. And you know, when <laughs> when it comes to this topic, like I'm always so um, I guess 
not nervous, but careful around it because I don't want to create this idea of like, you're for sure going to do it. You're going to do it this year because I, again, going back to what we just said. I've seen, I, I've seen that happen before with some competitors. Yeah. Like, man, she's, and then, you know, it didn't happen. And it didn't happen. Which, you know. And things happen. And so I don't <laughs> want to make this idea and create this like for sure thing and like tell people or, or and I definitely don't want to come off as, um, you know, too cocky or something like that's not me. And I don't want to be that because I know that there are such great competitors out there and it's all about who shows up. So I can bring the best package that I can that day. And that might even be considered a pro physique, but there might be people better. Yep. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you are competing against a pro. So whether you are that pro that wins or, you know, so it's like, yeah, there, you can still bring a pro physique and get beat. So I don't want to think like, um, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get it. But he, we're, we're positive about it. Um, you know, seeing, seeing kind of, uh, past winners and, and while well, you shouldn't compare because, you know, images don't do everybody justice. Um, and I wasn't there that day when they went pro or whatever, but, um, just kind of seeing and taking account past winners. I think that I have a good chance and I know I belong there and I deserve to be there. But again, I have nothing but respect to other competitors who show up to a national situation because they also deserve to be there. Um, and if I get beat, um, by someone who is become a you know is going to become a pro then then it is what it is they also deserve that so mm -hmm. i can only hope and i can bring the best that i can bring and um i hope that i bring a pro physique and and there's really all that you know is is there to it and if it doesn't happen it's okay because whoever wins that show deserves it beautifully said so. beautifully said um i'm one of the contributing videographers for npc texas um, so of course we get the prejudging. There's a break. There's the finals. I think like the last, not a couple weeks ago at a show. Um, during the break, I got up on stages for fun, and, and you know, I haven't I hadn't done that in a while. See all the lights. I mean, how do you handle that? It's it's just intimidating. A little bit. The lights. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that was something when I was like first starting out. I was like, it's so intimidating to think about all the lights. Like you're the only person there. When you're doing posing practice, do you practice with lights on? I don't know. Like but I mean, that's a good idea, but um, you, you don't always have access to facilities that have lights or things like that. So you kind of, you know, with the amount of time that you have to spend doing posing and practicing, you don't always have access to facilities like that. Um, but that's okay because in my experience, when I am about to go on stage, I'm not really thinking like, oh my gosh, all these lights are on me or, oh my gosh, I'm not even thinking about like, what are the judges thinking? It's like, it's happened so fast. Yeah. That's all I can say. It's like you're out there and you're just trying to do your thing. And in your mind, at least in my mind, I'll stop, saying, I'll stop saying like your mind because not everybody's the same as me. But in my mind, when I go out there, all I'm trying to tell myself is like, slow down. Because when you get up there, it's so easy to just kind of speed through your routine. Mm -hmm. It's just like, just breathe and slow down. Because even if you think you're going slow, Majority of the time, not always, you're probably going too fast. I think it's harder. It's, is it harder on the NPC competitors, you think, to go slow? Because, like, they have limited time. You do have limited time, for sure. And, like, mm -hmm. that's because, like, you know, you're about to go on stage and, like, okay, you have 10 seconds. And you're like, 10 seconds? <laughs> Interesting. Like, okay, so let me just. But it's, it's still important to know that there is, like, you have to really be conscious of, like, balancing the 10 seconds and being, like, you know, I have to make sure that I hit these shots so the judges can see my physique and get into them without doing excess things. You know, you want to have a flow to your routine, but without going overboard because they want to see your main, from my understanding, they want to see your main shots. You know, they want to see your back pose. They want to see your front pose. They want to see your side or whatever pose you're going to be doing. They want to see that. So they don't want too much excess. But they want, you know, a flow to it, to where it's not just like, oh, right, left, right, left. It's if there's a flow, but not too much excess. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, in terms of like balancing your 10 seconds or 12 seconds or whatever, it's like try to be slow and smooth with it, but get into those shots and make sure that you stick them because that's what they want to see. Mm -hmm. Do you have any friends who are in pro wellness? I mean, they get so much time up there. The other routines are longer and they do. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I haven't even thought about like what that would be like, yeah. because like I said, we're getting really ahead just, of ourselves now. Exactly. For <laughs> me, like I said, it's like really just about step by step, like just want to get that pro card for sure. But um, first and foremost, but they do have a lot of time. So like there's a lot more um, 
you know, room for creativity and, and doing some different things. But I actually don't have any wellness friends uh, or actually any pros necessarily that I have talked to about that. But again, it's like one of those things where it's like, if I become pro, when that happens, like it's something I'll deal with it. But like at the moment, I have 10 seconds. So, you know. What about, um, we have just a few minutes left. Um, what were you like as a kid growing up? I mean, your, your parents still had a lot of confidence in you? Not confidence in me. Um, I think I saw them at the at one of your shows, didn't I? Yeah, so um, they've actually gone to both of my shows um, that I had in Texas. And they've been, they don't really understand bodybuilding. It's not something that they do. And, and that's okay because my very few people do probably. We love our parents, but my, yes. par my parents don't either. Yeah, and that's okay. You know, like, <laughs> you know, especially like, it's a strange concept for your daughter to do something like bodybuilding because it's just like, you know, the whole thing, when you think about for what it is at face value, it's like, I'm in a bikini, you know, like for them, it's it's kind of strange. Like, like, why is my daughter going up on stage in a bikini? You know, but to me, it's more than that. And to people who were involved in it, they don't see it like that. And that's okay because a lot of people aren't, um, you know, don't understand the bodybuilding perspective and that's fine. You can't expect them to. Sure. Um, but they are supportive in their own way. And I know that this, the first prep was very hard on them. Like, I made it hard on them, I'm sure. Um, and that was something that I worked on my second prep to not be so hard on people, um, to try and make sure that I'm, this is my decision, you know? So I shouldn't take it out on somebody else when I'm miserable. And I still have to work on that, but I got a lot better but, uh, about it. But the point being, they did show up to that first show. And um, I, I am grateful for them. And, and they actually did get very emotional when I did a winning, winning and they were um, very excited for me, very proud. And um, the second show, the same thing. They're very excited, very yeah, proud. Yeah, two shows, two yeah. wins. They, they were, my mom's very emotional as well. So she, you know, like the first time that I even, you know, for the first show when I, when I came out and I wasn't even on stage yet, but I had my makeup done and my hair done and she was just like very emotional. And she's like, you know, like, fact that I was actually doing it she's she's very proud so they're they're both very proud and um they all I heard growing up was you know they never pushed me to do anything um my family's not a huge sports family but I was um but my mom she went to like every you know track cross country event that she could um even though like in cross country you know she only sees me for like 10 seconds and then you're gone and then you come back and like view you know and you finish so it's like she would still go, you know, um, she would go to my college once, uh, my college track and field. Events. Your only child? No, I have a sister. Okay. Um, but again, she's just she's it's not a huge sports family. So mm -hmm. she does her thing and I do mine. But um, and that's fine. It's some it's not something that bodybuilding runs in my family or anything. But they they do get emotional. They get they get they are supportive. And, and I, I do appreciate that. And they're getting like, you know, more involved as I as I get um, into it more. So that's cool. Yeah. I'll leave you with a question or, or uh, anything else you want to say or add? <laughs> no, well. I mean, uh, I mean, just while I'm here, you know, I, I just want to make sure, you know, everybody knows that um, any chance I get, I want to say thank you to everyone who's, who's helped me get here today. I'm so grateful to everyone who's um, supported me. And I feel like as I, like I said, as I get more into the sport, I get more supporters. Um, Everybody at my gym that I work out at um, Metroflex in, in Fort Worth, they've been really supportive. Um, they, you know, they keep up with me and like, you know, the videos that I take, I have some um, supporters there. Um, you know, Brian, who has been there every day, who shows up, deals with me at my worst. My parents, um, you know, I love them. My coach, Jay Warren, he's amazing. My PT, Julian, he's, you know, so grateful for him as well. and. Molly and Matt, every day, love them. Such role models to me. And um, like, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody because I just feel so grateful to everybody. But it, it's like, you know, I just, I can't say enough how grateful I am to everybody. It's just, I appreciate them beyond belief. That's perfect. I think that's a perfect way to end. We kind of started the show with Molly and Matt and we're ending with Molly and Matt. Yeah. So I like that. Full circle. <laughs> so, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. So this is episode two of Posing Three Times in Studio. You guys have a good rest of your day, and I hope you come back soon. Bye.